Everybody loves Batman. Wherever you go, you see kids with Batman shirts, you see Batman movies all over the place. We've had 40 years of Batman film, TV. Everybody fucking loves Batman. I love Batman, but ever since I was a kid, I had a huge issue with something. This manic depressive sociopathic man in his mid 30s is always adopting a child. 10 year old, 11 year old, a 12 year old, what have you. I feel like no one really takes the time to think about why this is so fucking insane. Because when this happens in real life, Child Protective Services is called. And for some reason in comics, it's just not a big deal. And everyone turns a fucking blind eye to it. Before we look at these ch poor children that are left in this insane man's care, we have to look at the type of person he is. Everybody knows the story. It's, it's nothing new. Parents were murdered, shot dead in a place called Crime Alley. Honestly, if you go in a place called Crime Alley and you expect a crime not to happen, you deserve, you deserve your fate. And you know, that eight year old boy probably died with his parents that night. And in this moment, he made the split second decision that I'm just gonna fight crime forever after this. I'm gonna train for fucking years. I'm gonna train for two pages, basically. That's gonna be over the course of 20 years. I'm gonna become this huge, bulky, smart, rich man, and I'm gonna fight crime. I'm just gonna beat the shit out of people. I don't like what they're doing. So now that he's done this, he's gotta think, okay, I'm not gonna go out as myself and beat people into a pulp. Everybody knows my face. I'm the most popular man in Gotham. I fucked every girl in town. Can't do it on my own. So what happens one night? He's sitting in his study, in his room, what have you. A retarded bat, a retarded bat, flies in through the window. He says, okay, that's it right there. I'm gonna dress up, I'm gonna dress up like a bat. And not only am I gonna dress up like a bat, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that this is my dead dad speaking to me. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I need some ideas. Dad, just toss the thing on through the window. First thing that comes in, that's it. So he's gonna become the retarded bat. Primary testing laboratory. No! Pass the probe. <coughs> Graduate students all gather for. No! Love the haircut. <laughs> he becomes Batman. I uh, runs around, pretty much dressed up for Halloween, blending into the shadows, making criminals shit in their pants the moment they see him, and that's not enough. He's got to break all their bones and just leave them and go on his merry way. But the thing about this because he's so fucking depressed, he's so psycho and sociopathic, he's completely by himself. He sits at home in his, in his cave, in his clubhouse, essentially, in front of this huge fucking computer. There's no way that this thing doesn't spew cancer everywhere. It's probably the computer that Steve Jobs have been sitting in front of. <laughs> by myself, I don't want help from anyone. This includes the only man who really gave a shit about him. The only living person who really cared about him. This is Butler Alfred, and I mean the guy, the guy can't even get him to eat a fucking sandwich, like take a break for five minutes. It's like, no, he acts like a fucking sad 16 year old girl who lost the fucking prom queen. No one understands me, I don't want to talk, get out, go away. But for some weird reason, he kind of has this soft spot for little boys, and one night he's at the circus, I don't know what this guy, I don't think anyone goes to the circus anymore. And uh, I don't know, some circus freak, his parents died, and he's like, oh, you, I also have dead parents. I bet we would have a lot in common. I'm old and you're young as fuck. You're 12 years old. Dick Grayson, come on, come in and live with me. You can live with like a really, really rich, cool guy, but not he's not that cool. Or you can live in an orphanage, and what are you gonna do? So he moves in, he moves in with the rich guy. Rich guy says, if you're gonna live with me, there are gonna be some ground rules. First, you gotta wear this fucking outfit. He puts on this mask that literally is like this. That's it. I mean, I can still see the entire rest of your face. I'm gonna wear a cape that does literally nothing. Fairy fucking boots, and probably leave a trail of glitter after every step. Just a green, tight, two sizes too small, speed up. What are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. Pursuing the enemies of law and order wherever they happen to be. Aren't you in the wrong city? On special assignment for the Daily Sentinel. You know my aide, Cato? Robin, the boy wonder. Well, I don't want to hold you up from your crime fighting. Thank you, and good luck to you, Mr. Hornet. Nice to have met you. Gosh, Batman, why are they dressed like that for? 
Well, Batman is dressed to scare the shit out of people. His new boy, Wonder Robin, is just dressed to give them erections every night. It's not Batman and Robin on Bono Patrol. He's just throwing this poor, a 12 year old boy into the fray with people, with these madmen who are literally bent on the death of Batman. Batman is so hard to kill, but look at that little kid over there. We could probably kill him. He's now given himself a weakness that all of these men can exploit. It's just tons of this child abuse that flew completely under the radar of Child Protective Services and every other superhero ever. Oh, you have a little kid? It's, it's, that's totally fine. We like that. We love kids here. But believe it or not, Dick Grayson paved the way for the rest of the Robins. Uh, actually turned out alright, he got a little too old. Makes his own costume, becomes his own, his own superhero. So now, Batman is all alone. He's got no one but his feelings. Say, okay, I'm just gonna go out. I'm gonna fight crime. Well, you know, that, that's been working great so far. Comes back extra tired to the Batmobile, which he parked, of course, in Crime Alley again. He just parks the Batmobile. He walks in on another 12-year-old boy, Jason Todd, stealing his tires. Why would you, who does that? Who does that? I'm at, oh, this is Batman's, this is Batman's car, the guy who beats the crap out of everyone? I'm gonna steal his tires, great. Nothing bad's gonna happen, I promise. Today's gonna be the best day ever. Yeah, yeah, ain't nothing horrible gonna happen today. So of course Batman says, hey you, you're stealing my tires, I gotta get home, how am I gonna get home? And what does this kid do? Beats him with a, with a tire iron. That's the first, that's the first meeting they have. It's probably the best time they'll ever have because it only goes downhill from here. He convinces this young boy with also no parents and clearly nothing better to do. Put on the Robin undies, go out trolling for crime. He trains him for six, six months, okay? Bruce has been training for 20, 20 years, 20 comic book years. I can't learn anything in six months. I don't know what he thought six months would do for this kid. I actually didn't do anything because one day they meet the guy, the one man who probably loves orphan beatings yeah. as much as that man. Yeah. <laughs> the Joker. Joker just beats Jason into a pulp with a crowbar. And because that's not enough, he just leaves him in a building with a wire to explode. Boom. Dead. Batman has a dead child on his hand. There's literally no one alive to care about him, so I guess he got away with it. He got away with kid murder. So now Robin, the sequel, Jason Todd, is dead. But really, for me, in my opinion, it wasn't the Joker that killed him. It was the fans that killed him. DC let the fans call in. They let readers call in. They said, call this number if you want him to live. Call this number if you want him to die. Everyone wanted him dead because he was a, he was a shit Robin. More Robins I could count on one hand. He's at the bottom of the list. But he meets, he meets Bruce. He's stealing from him, first of all. He breaks Batman's two rules, which I have just combined into one mega rule, which is no guns, no killing. But he manages to break, to break both of them. He shoots at people and he kills someone. Batman watches both of them go down and just kind of brushes it off. Well, that's, you know, I'll bend, I'll bend the rules. Just this once, I swear, I'll, I'll, I'll never do it again. To Bruce, this is his big, the biggest mistake of his career, and he forever lets it haunt him. But the thing is, he doesn't learn from it. <laughs> he says I shouldn't have done that, but he t totally does it again. A month later, <laughs> what happens is uh, this another boy is a little bit older. He's 13 now. So 12, because I think I think this year might make the, this one year gap might make the difference. Tim Drake, personally, my my favorite Robin, figures out who Batman is on his own. It's a little far fetched. He sees the Dick Grayson Robin do a quadruple backflip, and he remembers going to the circus with his parents, who are still alive. 
Sees the Grayson do a quadruple backflip, and I guess it's the hardest backflip ever. Only one person can do it, so he says if Robin can do it, Dick can do it. They must be the same guy. Robin and Dick live with Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne's gotta be, gotta be Batman. The logic is severely flawed. He's right, so what do you know? He confronts Bruce Wayne, says I know you're Batman, and now I'm gonna be your Robin. He says, well, my last one just died. Yeah, I'm, yeah let's do it, let's do it anyway. Can totally take another kid. It takes Tim Drake out. But the thing is, what sets Tim apart from the other Robins, other than being just smarter and not a fucking idiot, is that he's got parents. So this is breaking Batman's third secret rule, which is that if you're gonna be part of the Batman club, you also have to join the dead parents club. And that's not that you have to be a dead parent to be in the club, but you're, you have, your parents have to be dead in order to join the club. On two separate occasions, uh, Batman is the only person who can save them and shows up five minutes too late, walks in on dead bodies, oh, darn it. To be honest, Tim, Tim turns out okay, a little bit like Dick Grayson, he becomes his own hero. So now Bruce is left by his lonesome because Tim Drake grew up and he, Bruce stays the same age for some reason. He's gotta ruin another child's life. So he meets a little boy named Damian Wayne. And here we you see the connection, Bruce Wayne, Damian Wayne. That's because Damian Wayne is essentially Bruce Wayne's test tube baby from years ago. He never knew about. He's 10 years old. Puberty isn't even a twinkle in his eye yet. He meets this kid who's been trained by his mother just to essentially be like the best bad guy ever to take over the world, to create an empire. He meets his dad. And he says, instead of taking over the world, I'm just gonna be a sad, sorry sap and sit in the dark with the cancer computer and the old man with the sandwiches. Uh, Damian Wayne is literally just like Jason Todd. He doesn't listen, he does what he wants, and he fucking kills people. He kills people. And Batman doesn't learn from fucking anything. He kills people, he says, well, I'm sure next time We'll get him and we won't kill him and we'll obey the rule. And the tables get turned and Damien gets killed himself. And he's not Robin from that long. He's Robin for three years, which in that time is not very long. He gets killed. He gets stabbed through the chest with his sword. This kid had his entire life ahead of him. Probably not because he is in league with Batman. He's destined to either die or have his entire family die around. So honestly, ever since I was five or six years old, I've always wondered who allows him to take to take in these these children, these little boys. Who thinks it's a good idea for essentially him to be their dad or kind of the guiding force in their life? Like Superman, Wonder Woman, none of them would say, Bruce, you have the worst, <laughs> literally the worst track record with children. You know what, maybe they think that it's been the same Robin the entire time. Maybe that's what's going on. So they don't say anything. He dies and then they say, oh, where's, he doesn't want to say, where's Robin? He says, no, this, this is the same one. I know he looks different, but trust, just trust me on this one. It's the same, it's the same exact guy. It's like he's trying to save the child, the brat inside of himself by trying to save these other kids, but he's totally not. And he's ruining their lives. Even if they lived and became their own hero, it's not like you're a superhero and only good things happen to you. It's like you're a superhero and only bad things happen to you and you just let good things happen to literally everyone else. It's almost as if there's a married couple going through, going, just going through some bad times in their marriage. And they're thinking that having a child, bringing a child into the fray will save the marriage. And then they have the kid and it doesn't or it dies and then they get a new kid and then it dies and they new, get a new kid and he does his own thing and was out of their life and then the, the marriage is just shit and then they had four kids and, and nothing really happened. He died that night in Prime Alley. There's no one inside. There's, there's no heart there. There's just, it's just a bat cave where his heart should be.
He's essentially the worst, the worst dad ever. I mean, he may as he may as well just hit the kids. Because that's 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 what's happening. Just skip the middleman. Skip Mr. Freeze. Skip the Joker. Skip the penguin. And just beat the kids <laughs> on your own. You had Tony Soprano, who's he was on antidepressants and he was a fucking sociopath. See a psychiatrist for six seasons, from first every single episode, from first to last. And you had, Batman hasn't seen a psychiatrist for six panels. So clearly, clearly something is wrong. That method of self-help <laughs> isn't working because it's really just self self-deprecation. So that's Batman. You can cut. <laughs>